Hey, this is Emily from Optics EQ. Uh, I'm going to try something new, looking at um, some races and uploading video to YouTube, kind of some tutorial type stuff using the Optics EQ platform. So um, for this race here, I'm going to look at the eighth race at Gulfstream today. This is a, a maiden race on the turf, and um, <laughs> you can hear my dog in the background. Um, one of the the key features in this race is we're looking at a race where we don't have data on every horse. So you can see over on um, the left side of the plot here, we have all these horses that are um, situated on the left side. And then another note, I'm recording this early, so the, um, the also eligible and the MTOs are still included. But um, for this purpose, you know, we're just looking at a race where we don't have information on a lot of horses. And using the plot, the grid, and some other features on optics to kind of get a handle on this race. So, um, you know, we start off at, at Optics Plot, and we have, you know, limited data on these horses because a lot of them haven't raced again or have limited starts. So from a pace perspective, we can't really gauge anything. Um, there's a few horses that have raced that are above this par line here. We've got five horses. So potentially pace could be hot, but again, you know, we don't we don't really know for sure. And uh, one of those horses is probably not likely to run. So um, one of the filters that I'll use here over on this side, you have all these um, filters, is Trainer Jockey. Um, you know, again, this is just kind of personal preference, but um, what I want to see is just kind of positive indicators. So there's a lot of dense bar action on the one, two, three. So I'm going to make note of that. Um, one of those horses we don't have data on, so probably going to upgrade that first time starter. A little bit of action on five, six, seven, eight, but um, a lot denser here. So uh, let's get into the grid. Um, and, you know, obviously I work for Optics, so I have um, the grid with notes um, included. And uh, we'll just start at the top. A lot of times when I'm handicapping, I'll start with the favorite, but um, just for this tutorial, we'll go. We'll go horse by horse here. Um, so the one horse here, um, first time starter. Um, again, this is one I just noted because I have some positive indicators, um, you know, in a race 15 to 1. Um, don't have a lot of data, but I'm going to make a note that I think that based on some, some positive factors, uh, maybe this horse is a player. So moving on to the second horse, um, race once, making a second start. Um, optics figures is our own speed figure. We do incorporate pace, the 79, uh, C plus, slog wide improved. So um, these are the type of projections I like to see on second time starter, lightly raced horses, horses coming off layoff, this type, uh, second off layoff, you know, these type of things. Um, so we have the horse that broke slow, right? Slog wide improved. Um, if you ever want to know what any of these are, kind of the quick dictionary. Um, after doing this for two years, I should have this memorized. But just so you know, there is that available. Um, and this will give just the ones for everything that's used in this race, right? So for looking at slog, opposite of pop, horse is breaking slow. Um, so slog wide and proof. Um, jockey sticks, they're adding the blinkers. Um, we don't have a note that this horse needed equipment change, but, um, you know, trust the connections here. So um, I'd give this horse a big chance. I'm just kind of glancing really quick. Actually, we'll move on and kind of come come back up. Um, the three horse, so this is your um, morning line favorite at two to one. This horse is making its fifth start. There's really kind of no progression much from um, speed figure and from grade. Now, a lot of these are sloppy, yielding. You know, we have our flag in here. Um, kind of indicates what we think of the speed figures, which is, you know, which is really helpful. But, um, you know, there's not, there's not much change. I guess you could say the best figure at 85 was earned on that firm turf, first time out with a wide trip. Um, I, I, I don't dislike this horse as the favorite. It's not one I'm going to sit here and go, oh, this horse is vulnerable. You know, I don't have an ouchie, a regress, a drop, anything here that's going to tell me, um, to kind of stay away from this horse. Um, Unexciting as a morning line favorite, I would say yeah. So uh, give this horse, you know, a chance. I wouldn't toss this horse, but um, you know, maybe a little bit more appealing. Um, and I did kind of want to go back up to the two, so we can see even this horse. Let's use its best figure, right? 
85, B minus wide, we have a 79 and an improve. Um, so can I project this horse can move forward six speed figures and at least be on the same page as the three? Um, I think that's a, that's a reasonable assessment. So, um, you know, from a speed figure, if we're going back up, looking at this two speed figure um, perspective, this horse should be sitting right at the same spot as the two. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll moving on. All right, so the number four. Um, making a second star off 146-day layoff, let's kind of go back. So um, this is kind of like one of my favorite kind of sneaky hidden features. We ride in any time this horse is scratched, and then it comes with a reason, right? So first time out, um, debuting at Saratoga, was scratched as an MTO. So kind of what um, I'm going to kind of lean towards on that is, they want to get this horse going two turns on the dirt, right? Trying to sneak one by. Um, Scratch is the MTO, then debuted, going six furlongs, no lead. Um, again, maybe this was a prep uh, race, you know, if they did want to go longer. Um, then the horse came back. Two turns at that time, right? We don't have two turn races on the dirt, so you gotta you got to take what they're giving you. Um, but was a vet scratch. So fair enough. The horse is coming back off a 146 day layoff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna still lean towards this horse's where the connections are putting pointing this horse is to two turns on the dirt. Um, so I'm gonna kind of pass on this one. Um, take a wait and see, and maybe um, it's it'll be a little bit more exciting once we go to the uh, to the dirt. All right, so um, five horse, we'll kind of do the five and the six together. Because, again, we don't have that much information. Um, by the connections, you can see why they're four to one, five to one on the morning line. Um, we'll go back over here. Some positive indicators, right? I guess not so much on the four. Um, so that, oh, I'm sorry, the five and the six, so we're looking at. So a couple positive indicators on the five and the six. Um Nothing overly exciting. Um, of the horses that have run so far that we've gone through, um, you know, no one's kind of um, really saying we shouldn't take a first-time starter, but at four to five, I'm not, I'm not really kind of looking there. Um, we'll move on to the seven. The so seven, um, trying turf for the first time um, for uh, Cassie getting Leperu some positive indicators on the seven. Let me scroll this over so you can see. Um, but I'm not going to knock this horse so much, right? It's kind of on par with the other two horses that are run and at 15 to 1. Um, but what we do know is, um, you know, these Cassie horses at Woodbine, they tend to be favored. They tend to take money. They tend to win early. So, um, you know, this horse being 15 to 1 I think is fair if you're just kind of, you know, Looking for a stab, I don't think this horse is impossible. Again, not exciting. Um, probably what I would do, and I haven't done it yet, and I might, I might go back and add, is watch these horses' races and just kind of assess the quality and see what it wants to do. Um, so look for those updates. If you guys watch this and you go back, I'll, I'll add a note on there. But that's probably what I would do in my handicapping process, or even if um, I didn't have... Um, I didn't work for optics, but I was using optics. Um, you know, you, everybody should have a, a video replay subscription some way, somehow. And, and watch that race and at least just kind of see what you think of the horse. Um, that would be kind of my next step in handicapping. All right, moving on to the eight. So again, we have a horse uh, stretching out for the first time and trying turf. So we'll go through our notes on debut. C plus, so kind of an average race, um, was wide and improved. Um, track profiling front runners so this horse way off the back you know kind of making up some ground then um, came back seven furlongs at Gulfstream no push so um, the jockey let's see what our description is for no push um, no push late in the race um, sometimes with trouble sometimes with not um, basically not ridden late is kind of the way we want to look at it um, and then drop so this horse not getting a drop I would um, I would kind of pass on this horse. Just doesn't look like it's competitive at this level. Um, also, a 59, a 59 speed figure. Um, we would have to project this horse to move forward 20 plus points, which it hasn't really improved in its two starts. So, um, you know, 21, a long shot in this race. That looks about right. Um, the nine horse, another first time starter. Um, 
a perfect world, we'd have workout information to kind of help. But we're going off, again, kind of the theme of this video is limited data, right? Um, first time starter, 12 to 1. Um, we'll go back what, what we do have. Um, everything going to the, to the left. So a um, few positive indicators, um, you know, the trainer's current year and at the meet, but everything else going to the left. So um, I would take take a wait and see, or at least kind of make sure that uh, everything else in here um, that has run just is, is really no good. Um, so our next horse is in number 10. It's a horse making its second career start. Um, C plus, no lead, improve. Again, these are what we like to see on these horses making their second start. Um, Flow bleeds late in the stretch, could be a little bit of greenness. They've uh, waited a couple months, so this horse has had some training off that first start. Um, Albatroni has two. He's got this horse we're kind of waiting for for main track only. A 20 to 1 shot. This looks to me like a pretty live long shot. This is definitely a horse I'd mess around with. Um, based on, we've got a no lead improve. Ran, ran a 67 on debut, so not terrible. We'll need to move forward, right? But what we see so far, 85, I'm, that's not crazy, um, a crazy jump. So um, looks to me like pretty live long shot in this uh, number 10 horse. Uh, number 11, kind of getting deeper out. Um, already entered once this meet, probably going to get scratched again on the 30th, so wanting to get a start as a two-year-old. Um, again, limited data. Elvis Trujillo was named on the APU, and he sticks around for what it's worth. Um, number 12, twice, you know, um, entered at Laurel Sprinting, and now seven and a half, now eight and a half. I don't really know what, what, um, we're trying to gauge what the trainer's trying to do here, whether this horse is a sprinter, um, you know, it seems kind of a, a leap to debut at five and a half, we'll try seven and a half, we'll try eight and a half. Um, I would kind of lean towards, uh, watching one on here, um, though there are a couple positive indicators, so if, you know, you like that horse, you're looking for a stab. Um, oh, this is interesting, too. So, again, you know, this horse, we can kind of forgive the Laurel because uh, Lynch doesn't ride here, but Leperu was named at Gulfstream, and uh, he shows up elsewhere. So, um, yeah, I, I'd lean more towards towards a prep with this horse. Um, we're getting further out, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm not going to go over um, all of these. Um Scratched also eligible again way out there. Um, this horse that has run, I'll kind of go over these notes. Looks a little slow, right? We don't really have any improved. Um, C plus, so kind of average. Other trouble minus, paddock plus. We'll look at our kind of free form note here. Heard it a bit late, trying to come up the inside. Should be competitive versus Florida Company. So facing open here, um, this horse is a, is a pass for me. Um, our lone B, so if this horse did draw in, um, four to one would be the second choice, no cover. So what no cover is, this is one of our newer keywords. It's kind of like a wide trip, um, but not, you know, super wide. You're not like five, six path, but maybe two, three. You just don't have any horses in front of you. Um, when we use specifically for turf racing, so, uh, B, B is a winning race at this level, 75. So B, no cover, um, First race of the meet, set clear off the pace setters, a bit green pre-race, took the lead in the stretch, so I probably could have added a green there. I might go back and do that. Um, you know, it was caught late by the favorite. So, you know, should this horse draw in and wasn't um, marooned out in the parking lot, I, I would definitely use this horse as well. So, again, kind of a short video, just kind of giving you some tips that I would use to, uh, to handicap this race. Um, assessing the favorite, assessing the current form on the field. Um, if nobody looks good, I don't see any improves, I don't see any Bs. This, this is the type of race I would lean towards a first-time starter. We have a couple second-time starters um, with the 2 and the 10 that, um, that look like major uses, um, along with the favorite being, being okay, um, can't toss. A lot of horses uh, we can pass on. And then probably of our first-time starters, I know, again, it's kind of limited information, so we're kind of guessing, so nothing real strong, but you are getting 15 to 1, is, uh, is the one horse. We have those positive indicators to the right. So um, 
that's kind of the way I would be leaning, playing this race, of course, always watching horses in the paddock, um, you know, making making the right decision as far as um, as value on the board and um, when considering this race to play. All right, thanks.